can tie as many as I used to. My name is Mark Reisler. I'm here uh, as a guest of yours this evening to High Country Fly Fishers. And we're going to start tying my very favorite fly, which is a Gary LaFontaine Buzzball. B-U-Z-Z-B-A-L-L. -Z -Z -L. A lot of people say fuzzball, but it is a buzzball. It's just three hackles put together. It's very, very simple. And what this emulates is bits and pieces of dead decomposing bugs. It is the dry fly that I use the most often. I am a presentation fan. I am not a pattern believer. I'm a presentation believer. I believe that if you make a several bad presentations at a fish, meaning 15 or 20 and he doesn't eat it, then you have to have the right pattern. But until then, you should be able to fool them with good presentation. And I think that that's a, certainly more important, and certainly that's what I preach. Uh, I do own a fly shop, and I'm an advocate of fly shops. And if you want to go into fly shops and buy lots and lots and lots and lots of flies, I, I, I'm a believer in that, because those guys have kids too. So spend lots of money at Trout Bum 2, your local fly shop here. Lots of money at Trout Bum 2. This is a, I've tied in three hackles. What I did is I prepped those bottoms. I don't know if you saw that already, but I prepped the bottom of the hackle. And what I do is I just cut that. You guys can see that there. So I'm cutting that back, and that gives you barbules right here to tie that in. So that thing's going to be a lot more secure. Oh, we're getting a little feedback. Beef lasagna. Beer over here. So I've tied in those three hackles. I've got an orange dye grizzly, a medium done, and a grizzly. This fly is pretty neat to tie because the only hackle of these three that nearly needs to be sized is this grizzly, and I will show you why. So I've tied those in. You could tie them in from the tip as well. You know, a lot of guys like to do that, really nice high-speed tires. But this is a fly that needs to look really awful and crappy. This is not a, not a hair-up fly or something that's very, very pretty or any of those cut-wing flies. This is a LaFontaine Buzzball and it's meant to be ugly because it is an expressionistic pattern. This is not a, a pattern that you would go, like I said, you use this first. When you foul that up, then you need that knockdown spinner with just one wing or one in the water and one up, transitional done, or any of those crazy, you know, mayfly half, half stages that we always have to throw. This is a fly that you throw first if the fish moves out of its land of heat. So I'm gonna tie Palmer, the, Orange dye grizz and the medium done. I did four or five wraps there. I like my flies a little more sparsely dressed. The ones we have tied commercially are a little more heavily dressed, and they certainly look better than the ones I'm going to tie. I will tell you that. So before I even move any farther forward, I was a commercial tire for 13 years. I tied in the neighborhood of 3,500 dozen flies a year. So I'm no stranger to standing in front of, sitting in front of this vice. I tied, uh, that's a lot of flies. You know, the, that's a ton of flies. That's well over, 40, that's over 40,000 flies every single year. I taught skiing full time for a long time too. I've been in the fishing business full time in the summers for 29 years. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep these hackles. Can you see that there? No, they have to be right there, don't they? So you can see I'm doing that prep work right now. And in, uh, who's that famous uh, commercial fly tire that wrote the book? It was uh, AK Best, yeah. So in AK, production flies, thank you, Scott. Um, AK Best said, production tying to him is anytime you tie more than one fly. When you get to your second fly, that is production fly tying. So I've tied that in, just palmered that. You can see the hackles are really, really long. You know, this might be two or three times gap length, maybe two, I can't see anymore either, so maybe two times. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut that in the round. And what that means is you're just gonna chop this off shorter than the gap length, cut that in the round, and if it looks all sloppy like that, that is what you're after. Can you see that? That looks pretty nice on the camera, doesn't it? Uh, so I've just chopped that off, chopped that in the round, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna palmer this forward four, five, six times. I'm just gonna tie that off. He said, this is an ugly fly. It does not need to be tied well. When I know, I know when I'm really rolling on production on this fly, which I don't do anymore, but I used to tie this for a couple shops locally. 38 seconds is what I was looking for. So this is a 38 second fly. You're not reverse, you know, hackling, you're not reverse wiring it like a, like a, uh, 
Griffiths knot, you where you would. And when you have all this stuff laid out, if I was going to be production fly tying, I'd have all the feathers prepped in front of me, I'd have all the hooks laid out, and I would be sitting down to tie flies. Not just to fool around with a cup of scotch, you know, or and that's how I used to drink it in the cup, but I guess you're not supposed to. <laughs> a glass of scotch. Um, but these things need to be ugly, and they're very, very fast. This is a very fast fly. So I'm just going to do a whip finish here now. The whip finisher's got a little nick in it. Dave, did I move that vice out of the sweet spot? No. You better not have. That's no, <laughs> I'll come back down and do another session for you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this off about half gap length on the top and bottom. And what you can see there, I can do that, right? It looks like it's in focus, although I can't see, so. None of these people can either. So okay, oh, then, and then everybody's in the same boat here. Yeah. You can see that head is not all that terrific, but it really doesn't matter. So that's what you're after. You can see underneath this right here, you can see that this is cut off half gap length. What this fly does, what the beauty of this fly is, is that it looks like every single bit and piece of dead decomposing bugs that floats down the Missouri. The Missouri River fish, this was tied for the Missouri River, created for the Missouri River in actually an eddy just below uh, the town of Craig, which is the kind of the epicenter of our fly fishing world there. And um, for all those scum suckers. So this is a scum sucker fly. And what this emulates is bits and pieces of dead decomposing bugs. And that could be a PMD, spinner, a, a caddis, a spent caddis, a um, originally tied for mid shucks that pile up on each other in the, in the late winter and spring. I had an opportunity to speak with Gary LaFontaine a number of times, uh, which was fantastic when I worked for the trout shop, my neighbor in the uh, 90s and he would come up previous to his death and we talked about this fly a lot as well and this was originally tied with not orange dyed grizzly it was tied with like a coachman brown and he was tied for bits and pieces of de dead decomposing bugs what you don't get with this fly is wing recognition or negative reinforcement based on a wing profile so the Missouri River fish, just like your Henry's Fork fish or some of those, after a lot of pressure, learn. Uh, you know, trees learn. People say that trout don't learn, but trout do learn. So what happens with this fly is, I guess I can't tie another one, is air is trapped underneath this thing. In this hackle, it's all hackle. So that looks like air bubbles. So it looks like the proteins, like this is starting to break down in the, in, on the surface of the water, which means the proteins are being broken down. And it's dead, and it's fuzzy, and it's bubbly, and it's, and it's not moving, easy for fish to get, and a lot easier to digest. So same caloric intake with less digestion problems. So, you know, to digest things, it takes calories. So when you get right down to the brass tacks on this thing, an ugly fly that makes a lot of sense for fish to eat. And you don't get negative reinforcement based on a wing profile. That's another thing you don't get. So this is a fly that actually the, the fish will move out of the lane to eat because it's not moving. You know, Missouri River, um, like I said, analogous to the Henry's Fork in meaning those fish are, can be very, very selective. And this is a fly that they don't they don't get negative reinforcement based on some of those wing profiles that we show them and makes a fantastic skated caddis. So if this thing is swinging out of the bottom of the run or the bottom of your pot of fish or individual fish, occasionally you get one that chases it when it swings out of the bottom. So that's another really positive benefit of this fly. So it's my favorite pattern. I'll tie another one here pretty quick. Hey, I gave, I, bring, I gave a trip away to this club, $20 to come fish in the Missouri. So I implore you to support your club and to buy some of those raffle tickets so their club can propagate itself. $20, $20 is cheap to come fish with me. Hey, you might not get a fish with me, you might fish with my guides, but <laughs> I was going to make some off-color joke, but I, I'm not going to. Um, about myself, self-deprecating. So you can have a crippled ball of rotting detritus. Correct. Crippled ball of rotting detritus. That's, a, that's exactly. So that's what that thing is. Like you said, you could attach any post. I, I found, <laughs> just does sound like it hurts. I've, uh, I have found that the ones with wings just don't work as well. But I will tie one um, in a little higher visibility. And you could use. Like I've used, I've used floss body. Here's some floss right here. Uh, I'm going to use this for the carry special. 
but you could, I've tried to tie this for the pseudocloion, which is one of our difficult hatches that I, I don't like to fish because fish don't eat it when we cast to them. But um, with dun, like a medium dun and a, and a, or a green floss body or dubbed body, uh, so that you could tie this, you know, for bits and pieces of whatever might work for you locally. Is that too shaky? Dave, is it me? Okay. No, I'm thinking, I mean, aren't you going to use it? You're going to sell this online, some DVD for $19.99, aren't you? You should be, should be calm. We plan on making our money. On this one? I hope you make enough to pay for my bar tab. It's only my second beer, though. This is delicious. Hey, I gotta tell you, it's my first time to Park City. What a cool place. I spent the morning, I came in last evening, and I saw those ski jumps behind the best, I'm just standing right over here, ski jumps. That is so cool that you guys had the Olympics here. I was a full-time skier for 13 years, so this is, I mean, it's, I just thought to myself, God, when I got here, I worked at small ski areas in Washington State and in Oregon. Um, why didn't I, why wasn't I in Park City? I couldn't have afforded it in those ski bum years, but there's probably a lot more chicks around than in those small ski areas. So uh, there's, I missed the boat there. And what fabulous skiing you guys have got here. What a cool spot. Big ski areas are, those are cool. Any other questions about the buzz ball before we move on to a carry special and why I like soft tackles? I have five or six of these tied. You guys are welcome to cut, you grab them if you want. I mostly steal mine from the shop. So there's, I found a really great way is to put it in a business card of mine and then you won't lose it. At least you won't lose it. You'll, you'll find it on the floorboard of your car in a couple months. Anyway, so there's the LaFontaine buzz ball. Film flies are very, very good on the Missouri. One step under the film is a soft tackle. Uh, when I arrived on the Missouri in May of 1992, I came from the Northwest from Washington State, caddis based, not a lot of insects because the water's not great there. And I had been introduced, by fit, my first fishing mentor had introduced me to, to soft tackles, so I had boxes of soft tackles, which work, as you guys know, everywhere. Um, certainly a, a lost art, not only in the tying portion, and I'm not going to show anything revolutionary in the tying part. I'm not, I'm a commercial tire, I'm not a pretty tire, but here's this fly, let's just talk about it before. We see it, so there's your carrier, this is your, we use this for a leech, this is actually a lake fly. Um, Mike over here showed me some beautiful hornbergs. Uh, but this is, this is a lake fly, carry special. Um, a Doc Spratly, if you guys are familiar with that, is another classic, remember the, uh, Oh God, is it, does it get, does your memory get worse as you age? Is that the deal? Who's that guy, the steel header, they had that, that pheasant tail nymph with the legs hanging down, it's just all pheasant tail, it's from Washington State. Uh, what's that? No, but he, I mean, he's a great tire, lake guy. Um, He's, his big steelhead deals where he throws rocks at them because he thinks they eat better if you, it'll come to me. It's the only fly that's ever been patented. There's a whole bunch of lake patterns that are very, very similar, if, and you guys do fish lakes here. Uh, but this is originally a lake pattern. We use it a lot on the Missouri just for a searching fly. So that's the carry special. This is pheasant rump. This is, I don't know if this is pheasant rump here, it might be. This could be anything. This is peacock, reverse ribbed. A little thorax is not quite big enough for my liking, but a lot of people don't even like a little thorax on there, and just a thread head. So that is the recipe for it. You could use, we're gonna use floss, purple. Purple, you know, purple's a huge color in fly fishing, as you guys know. Purple, olive, you could dub the body, you know, a semi-seal or something. I like kind of like really buggy, sloppily tied flies is what I like. I think that's great for fish. I said I'm not a pattern guy. I'm a sloppy, sloppy fly guy. So any soft tackle that you would like, we swing them for the betas, for the PMD, for the caddis. We could be a bunch of goo in the river in August and September, so not a great time to swing flies, whether it's streamer fishing or swinging a, a fly on your single-handed or your trout spay rod. I do it with my 10 foot nine, uh, two weight trout spay rod is what I like to do. Uh, with these, with a leech and a Scandinavian line, if you guys are familiar with that, and a really long leader. 
And, uh, and I'm not throwing a long ways. You know, misconception about a spay rod is you're throwing it to the TV over there. I'm never throwing my two-way to that TV. I'm throwing it to one of those cats in the back there, but I'm not throwing it, I'm not throwing it to the TV. Just, I'm not throwing it any farther than you would single-hander. It's just another way to skin the cat. That's good beer. Good light beer. I don't like flavor in my beer. So here's a carry special. This is a size 10, something or other. This is a Dairiki size 10, something or other. So I'm gonna thread on here. I gotta remember, ooh, we can't use that color thread. So we're gonna go black thread, a little more appropriate for this. I'm gonna thread this thing on. If I'm gonna remember how to tie this, I'll learn with you guys. Because you, the tailing is with this, you want the tail up here, a little easier to grab. Standing room only. Sir, did you buy your tickets for the, uh, for the raffle yet? They're $20 each, five for 100. <laughs> Saying. It's a lot easier to win if you enter a lot. That's what I found. So here I've got this, I've, I've just pulled off some um, fibers off my pheasant tail rump. Did I mention that? So this is pheasant tail rump right here. I watch fly tying videos, this is what they do, right? They just, they put it right here. This is the first time I've done a fly tying video. No, that's not true. I've done a few with John. Pheasant tail rump, so I've just pulled off a couple. I'm gonna measure the tail length. Some people like it, I like it longer. So it's a lot easier to tie in your tail if you start up here, as you guys remember, as I remember. So we're gonna thread that down to the bend. Boom, there you go. I'm gonna clip this guy off. You could thread that, finish that. It's way easier, I'm trying to remember. I think you wanna tie, I just tied this a month ago. At a, I did do a tying deal. You want this to be, you have to measure this. You kinda of want, that's probably too long. So I grabbed from the tailing fibers, up here, you know, stuff I'm not going to use. These are beautiful. These long fibers right here are just spectacular. Such great color in a pheasant tail rump. But I'm going to grab this shorter feather here for the hackle. A lot of times, I won't tie in the hackle. First, I will do a couple different versions. A lot of times, you would tie in the hackle. You'd, this is probably a more appropriate length. You tie in the hackle right now, and then in fact, I will. I'll try it right now. I'm going to cut this thing off. So you guys know how to prep this thing, right? You tie, you clip off of there, just like I did before. It's the easiest way. Clip that stuff off. You want the shiny, good side facing you. And you tie that right there. i got to remember. So you tie that right, like that, right there. Okay, so that's threaded on. So that part is done. Concave side, convex side facing me. Right, you want the shiny side, you want that to, to be outside. So there's a lot of different ways. I'm trying to remember the most efficient, yeah. So I'm gonna thread the wire on right now. You, I use the silver wire because it's a little easier to see on the camera. But uh, ultra fine gold, you know, the stuff that's actually tarnished a little bit, that's been in the back of your tying desk for a long time. I like that. You know, it gives you the ribbing, the variegation, a little bit of twinkle. He's told me he's been married three times. Then let's do a little dubbing. So I'm a huge fan of SLF. Or any of that tri lobal stuff, any of that LaFontaine stuff, but SLF, synthetic living fiber. Davy Watton synthetic living fiber is what this is. And this is, I'm enamored with this color. This is that, oh, the Whitlock Dark. So that's that stuff right there. You can see it's got red, some gold, some um, uh, orange, some olive, black, and it's just really super, super buggy. So I, you know, ideally you do a dubbing loop, which I never do. You can see I just do touch dub like LaFontaine would do. I'm a LaFontaine disciple. So I just touch dub that on there. Obviously a dubbing loop. 
if you're, you know, in your second glass of scotch, definitely dubbing loop. So I'm just threading that on. You can see it's pretty buggy. I like that kind of style. A lot of guys, that's too much for them. I'm going to dub this out. I'm going to pick this here in a sec with my dubbing brush. But, you know, properly it would be reverse ribbed. So I'll reverse rib it. Which is pretty cool looking. Did you buy your tickets already? Yeah. You're out? Okay, good. <laughs> I have a fly shop, man. I gotta be selling all the time. So I just cut that off. So which SLF is that? This is Whitlock Dark. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? Nice. Well, that's the price. It ain't the price anymore. <laughs> you bought that 20 years ago, right? I might have. I'm a, kind of a hoarder. So, yeah. Dub, I'm a, I just really like dubbing. And I have the dubbing blender. I mean, before you could buy all these blends, I mean, I was always a dubbing mixer. So I had, you know, I always do 10 parts. Five, like if I was new black, I'd do five parts black. But I might do a... Um, the hairline, the sparkle stuff, what's that called, hairline plus, and then a, the hairline, black, and then a little semi-seal chopped up first, and then put in the, and then one part orange, one part olive, one part brown, you know, with some SLF, so you get some, some fibers in there that have edges on them, um, hard edges, you know, which twinkle, so I would all, and then what, one or two parts dubbing kicker, I mean, I was always a big fan of that, and then, and then one day I'm walking down the aisle, and Dave Whitlock, decided to make that, so you can see that. <laughs> and then I stopped, I stopped mixing, I just buy that stuff. So I've got that on there. Hackle pliers, I like the teardrop. Everybody has a different opinion, so I'm gonna grab this. Yeah, you can take some free flies, too. Whitlock? John. John so I've got that on there. One and a half wraps. And then just fold this guy back. You could also do, I'll do a couple different hackling methods. Pretty sparse. That's what you want. Over hackled soft hackles are awful. Then if you wanted to add, which I like to add, just a little bit in the thorax here. So I'm just going to add a little bit, appropriate amount. There we go. Finish that off nicely. You know what this this tying in front of this camera reminds me of? It, yeah. Well, I'm a, I don't know if I should say it. It's kind of like the mirror on the ceiling. I mean, isn't it? I mean, I can. I mean, I'm here. <laughs> that's not inappropriate, is it? That's not. No, no, no. That's okay. So there's there's the first one. Yeah, that didn't I talk about. We, we all have. <laughs> 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 this is part awesome. That's <laughs> you can get away with a little more up here. That is fantastic. So that's the first. I'll tie a couple different variations. I'll show you how to. You, I'm sure you guys are familiar with folding the hackle or pulling half the hackle off before you do this, so it doesn't. These these, you know, your traditional. Um, Try fly hackles before, you know, the invention of this stuff, which is fantastic. You know, when the feather used to be this big. Remember that? Remember those days? That's just awful. Uh, you know, you might need, if you're using some partridge, sometimes, you know, the stems get pretty thick, so it's a little harder to hackle on that. Uh, then I would think that would be necessitate pulling half the fibers off or folding the head, doing all that stuff. This stuff is pretty easy to work with. So, and then you could also, and I'll tie one, I mean, you could change that, you could do a little hot spot right here, right? You could do the, the thorax a different color, like an orange, or if you did orange with a black, so I'll do like an October caddis version. Can you do one more real quick? I'm going to do a step. Yeah, oh yeah. Are we still, we have still have time, right? Yeah, you, got, you got nine minutes. Time. Nine minutes. No pressure. No, I don't, I, no, I don't feel pressure. No. I, one of my greatest assets is I've ne I never worry about anything, but one of my greatest faults is 
I never worry about anything, yeah. I'll do an October Caddis version. But you know, this all the floss, these are really cool to do. All the floss, purple floss. I don't know if I have that dubbing with me. Oh, I do. Look at the little SLF cube. Those are so cool, except for when I, I ordered it on the computer, because none of my local retailers had it. And when it came, it was that size, if you guys can see that. In the picture, it looked a lot bigger. <laughs> and I got it, I was like, oh man. But this is a neat little sampler of SLF. There's a great October Caddis color there. But you could do, you know, stone fly colors. You could do golden stone. You could tie a little heavier. So, I mean, you could emulate a number of different things actually with this. So, I'll tie on. Let's do tailing, so good tailing. But you could tie, you know, any tailing you wanted, any hackle fiber back there, you could tie um, a synthetic, you know, a Zelon or a, a lot of guys like a shorter tail, tie one of the shorter tail this time. You could tie anything off the tail that you desire. So you guys well know, the beauty of fly tying is you can do anything you want, and fish are pretty receptive to a lot of different a lot of different things. I'll tie it a different order this time. I'll tie on the rib. Smart, you know, down if I, on my 10th fly, I'd be tying in the rib and the tail at the same time. Save one step, because it's not gonna, you can manipulate the wire. So let's do an October Caddis version here. Go on down there. A touch dubbing technique, you just need to get it near the fly, or near the thread rather. October caddis, you know, are pretty thick, so you can tie that, you know, much larger. Then you can pick it out. I'll reverse rib it because you're supposed to. So when you reverse reverse rib when you're coming through hackle, makes it a lot stronger. Peacock or pheasant tail. I used to uh, have different scissors for cutting wire, but then I just said, screw it. Yeah, you don't cut your your tips. You don't cut them with the, you cut your wire right, right down there. Okay, so I'm gonna pick that out because I think it looks crappy. So let's pick that out. There we go. That looks cool. So now let's tie on the hackle right here. Again, I'm gonna trim this. I'm gonna trim back some barbules, exposing the stem. That's right, if you tie it on sideways, it kicks the right way. So here, I love, like I said, I like this teardrop hackle plier. Oh, it's too close to the eye. It is going to take me nine minutes. I've made a drastic error. That's huge. It's huge. <laughs> That's right. We can edit that out. Don't worry. Good thing it's fly time, and you can always fix it. Okay. So here we go. I think it's in a little better spot. Although if I was tying at home, I'd just let it ride. So I'm going to stroke those back. I'll do a little heavier hackle here than this last one. Usually you can just pop that thing off. It didn't work there, but you can pop that feather off. There we go. And then I think a nice, you know, October caddis has that black thorax and that Whitlock dark is ideal for that. And then we'll just pick this back into this feather too. So you've got advantage of that feather there. Oh, oh that's cool looking. So there's a really cool generic, call the carry special, but a generic soft tackle that work on so many different resources. Again, a fly that you can you can change. So right there, Scott, make it, let's make it through. I'm trying. So let's pick that guy out there too. Oh. Look at that. So I've impressed myself a little bit there. Good thing I, you can see I'm tying, except for that right there. 
That's cool. That's a great fly. So there's an October Caddis version of that. Yeah, there's a hackle. It's just a no body hackle. No, SLF and sloppy tying. Scott, you might be one of those neat fly tires. Are you one of those neat, really neat fly tires? I'll let Hackle pick up slime on the Missouri. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would, Dave. Yeah, Slimey. absolutely. So there's, there's. I mean, you could tie any, any soft. Any questions about that specific fly or any soft hackle, or sir? Perfect. That's awesome. That S11 is, so, like I said, such a wonderful product. I mean, the buggy nature of that. I don't like to use any of that, the super fine stuff, even on dries. I, I'm, a, I'm a sloppy. Consequently, I don't have any patterns. You know, I, there's not any Mark Reisler patterns. You know, a lot of guys have, are fly producers. I was always a fly tire. I'm not a fly creator. Um, and I could tweak a few things like this, but I, this is kind of, this would be indicative of my style, would be just to have all this sh shit hanging off of there. Yeah. That's a, this is as, re yes, Mike, that's as refined as I get right there. Yeah, if you look, you'll see some nymph boxes of mine there. I still have some nymphs that I tied, and they all look like that. Just balls of dubbing on a hook. <laughs> that's, 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 my, that's my style, yeah. <laughs> 